Hello, what's up there? This is FitProZone Fitness with an exciting video. Picture this, you're watching the Olympics, the 100 meter final is about to start, and you notice something. Almost every sprinter at the starting line is black. Usain Bolt, Florence Griffith Joyner, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, these names dominate sprinting. History. But why do black athletes, especially those with West African roots, seem to always take the gold in short distance races? Today we're diving into the science, history and culture behind this phenomenon. Trust me, you won't want to look away. Let's kick things off with the science, because biology plays a massive role here. Ever heard of fast twitch muscle fibers? These are the muscles that give you explosive power, the kind you need to blast off the starting blocks or leap for a dunk. Humans have two main types of muscle fibers, slow twitch, which are great for endurance, think marathon runners, and fast twitch, built for speed and power, think sprinters, and jumpers. Studies show that people of West African descent often have a higher percentage of fast twitch fibers, sometimes up to 80%, compared to about 60% in white athletes. That's a big edge when it comes to short bursts of speed. But it gets even weeder. There's this thing called the ACTN3 gene, sometimes nicknamed the speed gene. It produces a protein that lives in your fast twitch muscles, helping them fire with maximum force. Now here's the kicker. Research shows that 98% of elite Jamaican sprinters have a specific version of this gene that is perfect for sprinting. Compare that to only 70-80% to of Europeans who have it. That's not just a small difference. It's a genetic head start for explosive power. And it's not just about muscles. Body structure matters too. Black sprinters often have longer limbs, which means a longer stride length. They also tend to have narrower hips, making their running mechanics more efficient. Plus, their calf muscles are often denser, generating more force with every step. These traits aren't random, they're evolutionary adaptations from West Africa, where survival might have depended on outrunning a predator or chasing down prey in short, intense bursts. So let's talk about evolution for a second. Thousands of years ago, life in West Africa wasn't exactly a walk in the park. The environment favored people with explosive strength for hunting or fighting, heat resistance for surviving scorching climates, and anaerobic power for quick, intense efforts. Over time, these pressures likely shaped genetic traits that we now see in top sprinters. But there's another layer to this, and it's heavy, the transatlantic. Slave trade. Enslaved Africans faced brutal conditions, forced marches, backbreaking labor, and harsh climates. Only the strongest survived, which may have concentrated these athletic genes in their descendants. It's a grim part of history, but it's part of the story. Now let's shift gears to culture, because it's not all about biology. Take Jamaica, a tiny island with just 2.8 million people, yet it churns out more elite sprinters per capita than anywhere else. Why? It's a sprinting factory. They have this event called Champs, a national high school competition that's like the Super Bowl of track. Kids grow up dreaming of being the next Usain Bolt or Shelly Ann Fraser Price. These role models don't just inspire, they create a cycle of ambition. Add to that a training system that hones speed from a young age, and you've got a recipe for dominance in the US. There's something similar going on, what I like to call the copycat effect. Black athletes often gravitate towards sports where they see people who look like them succeeding, think basketball, football, or track. Meanwhile, white athletes might lean towards sports like swimming, where body composition and access to facilities like pools play a bigger role. And let's not forget economics. Sprinting is one of the most accessible sports out there. All you need is a pair of shoes and a track. For communities with fewer resources, it's a clear path. To success, no fancy equipment required. Now let's look at the numbers, because they don't lie. Since 1980, every single Olympic 100-meter gold medalist has been of West African descent. That's not a coincidence. If you check the all-time top 100-meter times, 99% of them belong to black sprinters. And since 2008, Jamaica has been outpacing even the US in sprinting medals. The data is clear. Black athletes are dominating. But hold up, is it the same for all black populations? Nope. East African runners, like those from Kenya or Ethiopia, rule long-distance races. That's because they've got different genetic and environmental adaptations, like living at high altitudes, which boosts endurance. So it's not a one-size-fits-all thing. And here's another thing to chew on. It's not just genetics. If a white athlete had the same muscle composition, training, and drive as someone like Usain Bolt, could they compete at that level? Maybe. But the genetic odds are stacked differently. Still, we've seen exceptions, like Christophe Limater, a white French sprinter who broke the 10-second barrier in the 100 meters. He's a rare case, but it shows individual potential can defy trends. 
we also need to be careful here. Talking about genetic advantages can slip into stereotyping if we're not thoughtful. Not every black person is born to sprint, just like not every white person is destined for swimming. These are trends, not rules. Individual talent varies wildly, and that's what makes sports so exciting. So what's the big picture? Black sprinters' dominance comes down to a powerful combo, genetic advantages like fast twitch fibers and the ACTN3 gene, evolutionary adaptations from West African environments, and cultural factors that turn raw talent into world-class performance. It's nature and nurture working together to create something extraordinary. Before we wrap up, let's think about this. Speed is like any other human trait, whether it's intelligence, creativity, or grit. It's shaped by both biology and environment. The next world record sprinter could come from anywhere, but if history and science are any guide, they'll probably have West African roots. And that's it for now. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for fitness education, tips, and insights.